who jumps out of perfectly good airplanes in the name of science, Mr. C. Well, happy hootum to you. Huh? Hootum. H-O-O-T-M. Happy once of the month. March 1st. It's March 1st. So we just have March ahead of us. And I want to show you a calendar. So can you see Hootam on there? There it is right there, March 1st. And notice I've got down a small test on Thursday. Third quarter ends Friday. Next week is the first week of the fourth quarter. And it's conferences on Thursday. So half day Thursday. <coughs> Excuse me, allergies, allergies. So anyway, Thursday, half day conferences. And then Friday and then spring break starts. So woohoo. <coughs> Let's see if I can correct this allergy issue. I think I can. So anyway, then spring break, and then we come back for a week and a half in March, and then we're into the first week of April, and then uh, the first week in April, uh, on that Friday, the 2nd of April, it is Good Friday, and Good Friday it is because um, the possibility of us being forgiven of our sins and living eternally happened on that Good Friday, so it's a Good Friday. And then um, we have no school on that Monday following that, on Easter Monday, as they say in Oz, in Australia. So we come back on the 6th of April, and then roll through April, and then half of May, and then it's finals. So anyway, all of that, a look at what is coming. So... Now, I know many of you have really been worried about this. Some of you have told me that you've dreamed about this. Oops, I'm getting a Pinocchio. And asking each other at lunchtime, for instance, just frequently, when are we going to get the lake levels? Because you're, you know, all fired up about the lake levels. So, it's the 1st of March. So, here are your lake levels. Here they are, um, right um going to be put right in your journal. So lake levels in your journal, I'll talk a little bit about our continuing drought after I get a Kleenex. So I don't know about you, but my allergies have been going bonkers, bonkers I say. So anyway, um, you've got your journal out, you've turned to lake levels, here are the lake levels. Roosevelt Lake, March 1st, 82%. 82% full. That's good because there's still a lot of snow up in the White Mountains yet. Uh, I would think to um, run off. The total lakes are 77%. So more than three quarters full with runoff yet. So 82 for Roosevelt Lake, 77 for all the lakes. Now, it's good news about the Salt River that drains the White Mountains to the east and to the northeast. It's good news. That watershed has quite a bit of snow on it still and has been doing a nice job over the last two years. It's the Verde River to the north, Flagstaff Way, the Verde River watershed. It's not been producing for us. Get with the program, Verde River watershed. So anyway, we still need two or three really good snows yet. Now last year we got late snows, late in the season, in March, even into April. So I'm going to pray that that's what we get this year, that we have a repeat pattern of that, because we really need it. 
Bartlett Lake on the Verde River is 46%. That's it, not even half. And then a little bitty lake up there, it might be Horseshoe. It's not a big lake, but it's like 3% full. That stinks. So anyway, we need to pray. We're in a drought. Even though our lake levels are in good shape, we got carried over from last year when we got super snowfall. Like I said, especially late in the snow year. So agree with me in prayer, will you? Okay. So Father, we're, we're grateful for that big snow we had a month ago or so and for the snow melt slash runoff that is yet to occur. Um, but we're continuing to pray. We're asking you because you meet all needs. So we're asking you to meet this need for water for us. I pray that we would still have another two really good snows in the high country, especially on the Verde River watershed. I thank you that you know all about watersheds and all about runoff and all about everything scientific. Uh, so we're weather patterns. So we're asking for a lower jet stream. If you'd move the jet lower and bring um, blob, big blobs of moisture over Southern California and Arizona, where we're both experiencing drought. Thank you that you hear our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So anyway, good prayer to pray. You, you got uh, the lake levels, right? So you got Roosevelt, Roosevelt at 82, and all the lakes at 77. Okay, I have your tests that you took on Friday in front of me. I want to go over it, and I've marked it up. Look what I put on this. You see what I put on the in the margin? Mr. C, it looks like you put final all over this. I did. This test has a lot of questions that are going to be on your final in May. Oh, who cares about that? It's in May. I know, but it's going to come really quickly. So this test um, is going to be a study guide, actually. So this will be a study guide. Your other tests will be a study guide. Are you going to do anything about getting those in our hands to study? Yeah, all the tests that we've taken the first quarter... Um, eventually, I'm going to put in your hands, and um, they're going to be available for study. When are you going to give those to us? Uh, first week in May. Yeah. What else are you going to give us? Well, we're diving back into the textbook. So you're bringing your textbook. Hopefully, you brought it today. You're bringing it all this week, the rest of the year. Uh, many of you are toting it along with you, as you should be. So textbook. Um, and uh, be ready to use it. So I'm going to, I will print off lesson summaries from the textbook from here on in both seventh grade and eighth grade. So now today we're doubled up seventh, eighth, mostly because we're going over the test. And then tomorrow you'll have separate video lectures and going over separate material the rest of the week as well, and uh, mostly the rest of um, the year. Okay, so let's go over this. John 1-3, you've had it all year. I hope you will say what a student I had last year say to me in a little note. Mr. C, thanks for your style of teaching, and I feel like I'll never forget John 1-3. Well, that's what I... I'm praying that you'll never remember, try it again, never forget John 1.3. So I hope I've glued it in there, brain glued it in. Hope so. All things were made by him, Jesus, and without him nothing was made that has been made. He made it all. He made every atom of all matter, everything in the universe, out of nothing. You know, Nick, huh? You know that'll be on the final. Nick, nothing instantly commanded. Oh, yeah. There you go, right there. There's probably three points right there. So, probably. 
Genesis 126. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Thank you, God, that you wanted to do that. Thank you for your humility in sharing your likeness with us. And I ask for four ways that you are like God in small ways um, or different from animals. So I'll run over the ones I have on here really quick. Made in God's image, I'll take it. Have a soul, invisible part of you, a spirit uh, to communicate with God, conscience, self-awareness, emotional, will, a chooser, eternal, creativity, personality, purpose. So um, there you go. I think we got it all in there. Okay, five and six. Um, in five and six, here's what I ask. I'm going to switch up on these glasses. I'm going to switch up on these to go to these babies. Ah, yes, a little more magnification. This will be you in uh, 60 years. What happens? Your lenses become more rigid and they don't focus as well on close things or far away things. So you've got to get magnifying reading glasses to read things up close. Your long vision stays pretty good, but your near vision not so good as you get older. Some of you have noticed that in your grandparents. Maybe even some of your parents are having to use readers now, reading glasses. Okay, list four of the major characteristics of Mars that make landing a spacecraft or rover on the Martian surface, very challenging. Here are the possibilities. There's a bunch of them. It's super cold, obviously. There's no oxygen. There's no water in liquid form. It's seven months to get there, seven months to get back. It's really windy. It's really dusty. That clogs up equipment and uh, machines and computers, and they don't work as well after time. There's a big temperature swing. You only have 38% of your mass and weight. So 38% of the gravity on Mars. So that's five and six, two points. Um, by the way, I've already graded, um, I don't know, three or four seventh grade tests and three or four eighth grade tests, and they were all A's, uh, all but one. They were all A's. So I like to do that just so I can say, well, it was easily possible to get an A on this. That means it was a, I think, a fair test. A fair test. Often on my tests, I have mm, at least one-third, sometimes a half of the class get an A. Well, I hope for that because I do a lot of brain gluing and I want you to remember things. I'm not trying to trick you like I've told you before on the test. I'm trying to ask you things I taught you. That's fair. So anyway, we'll see. I'm hoping that uh, many of you will have an A or B on this. And I won't be surprised. OK, finish up, Mr. C. Here we go. Why can't a JPL NASA scientist control moment by moment the entry, landing, uh, and touchdown maneuvers of the spacecraft as it comes down the Martian surface because the signal is delayed 7 to 11 minutes. So right now, if you had to communicate to it and it was on the way down, you're not going to communicate to it in time before it's on the surface, either soft landed or crash land. So it's got to be automated, so pre-programmed. So, and they did a great job at JPL Nash, uh, NASA. Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. But number eight, why is the Martian surface orange-red? You know this. Iron and oxygen have combined. FeO2, Fe iron, O2 oxygen, iron oxide, the compound iron oxide. The two elements have combined. What place on Earth could we compare to Mars's temperature um, uh, place on Earth? Antarctica, the Arctic, Siberia, it's that cold. Um, what did the JPL NASA scientists do 
to prevent perseverance from burning up in the 3,800 degree Fahrenheit temperatures as it came through the Martian atmosphere. Here's why it got that hot, because of friction with the thin atmosphere, 12,000 miles an hour. Well, they put a heat shield on it that eventually fell away. You saw it fall away in the videos. Why is the Mars atmosphere, the surrounding gas, atmosphere surrounding gases, um, why is the, um, where is it? I lost my track. There it is. What is the Mars atmosphere predominantly made of? CO2, right? Carbon dioxide, CO2. Number 12, from a day in summer to a winter night um, in winter. So that's redundant, Mr. C. A winter night, Mars can have a 265 degree temperature swing. Why? It's a long way from the heater long way from the sun, and an extremely thin atmosphere. Somebody wrote on one of the tests I corrected, there, is, there aren't gases to hold on to the heat. Right, that's exactly right, like on Earth. So our atmosphere holds on to the heat at night so it doesn't cool off too much. It's cooling off about 30 degrees right now, but that's nothing compared to the 265 degree temperature swing on Mars. Mercury's like that too, by the way. You seventh graders know that, you eighth graders might not. Um, seventh graders have had astronomy. All right, uh, scientists think there could be microorganisms, simple life in the Jezero crater where Perseverance landed, why? Well, they think there was water there in the past. There's evidence of water flowing and filling up the Jezero crater. So that's the reason. If there is life on Mars, and there could be, how did it get there? God put it there. There's no way it evolved. In a law of biogenesis, life makes life. Life can't form itself. Life, life can't come from non-life. It has never been observed, not once, ever, in science. So when scientists say, oh yeah, it evolved, just in your mind go, no it didn't. Absolutely didn't and couldn't. Law of biogenesis, baby. Non-life can't produce life. <clears throat> Even though they continue to say it, why do they say it? Because they don't want to believe in God. They're in denial. They're actually lying in some cases. Oh yeah, we know life formed all by itself. You do? There's no evidence for it. No evidence. So that's a big fat one. Yep. Put a Pinocchio on. <laughs> Pinocchio, baby. When you hear a scientist say that kind of stuff, just go... You know, if you're watching on TV, you can point at the TV and go, Pinocchio! You know, they're not going to hear you. I'm not trying to embarrass them, but it's a Pinocchio. But it's not the truth. It's not science. It's not evidence. It's not data. Don't want to believe in a God. Mm, has consequences. And big time consequences. So, thank you, God, that you reveal to us your existence. And that you forgive us, and that Jesus died for us, and that we can live forever. And thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Yep. Okay, move on, Mr. C. Well, I'm a little bit thankful there. A little bit of thanks there, well enough in my soul and spirit. Should be well enough in yours as well. So, I hope you've come to the point like I did when I was 12. I did it when I was 12. So, I just knew, I was convicted that I was far from perfect, that I was a sinner. To sin means to be imperfect, to miss the mark, it means. You don't hit perfection as a target. So I knew that was me. I knew I needed Jesus' forgiveness. I knew he died for me. I knew he came back to life. I knew he said that if I ask him in, so he would come in and forgive me and give me eternal life. Twelve years old. Thank you, God. So, anyway, keep it going. Okay, uh, if you weigh 100 pounds on Earth, you'd weigh 38 pounds on Mars. Why only 38% of your Earth weight? Because Mars has less mass. Less mass, less weight, less gravity. More mass, more weight, more gravity. Yeah. Hurry, Mr. C, hurry, you gotta give us our homework. I know, I know, I'm hurrying. Uh, list two of the biggest challenges astronauts would have living on Mars. Living. No water. These are astronauts. 
no oxygen, no heat, super cold. There's three. Why is Mars heavily cratered? No atmosphere to act as a shield, or hardly any. So that's the reason. Um, what do we got? 18, two reasons the metric system used worldwide. Oh, you know this. By the way, all of this I've got final, final, final. See it in the margin? On the final, on the final, on the final. So it's going to be there, going to be there. Okay, keep it going. Two reasons the metric system is used worldwide. Base 10, few prefixes. It's really simple, few standard units to learn, all of that. Okay, I gave you 19 as a freebie. Um, a great thing about the metric system is you can put a different prefix in front of the meter, liter, and gram and change the amount and Bob's your uncle. Early spring break freebie. You're welcome. A little you're welcome from Moana. Those of you who are Moana fans, like my grandkids. So I've watched it a few times with them. You bet I have. Okay, uh, let's see. Henry Hector 100, died Deca 10, by base 1, drinking Desi 0.1, chocolate centi 0.01, milli, milli 0.001. Okay, here we go, matter chemistry part. Volume is the amount of space an object takes up. 27, there could be gravity in a vacuum, but no matter, no atoms, nope, nope, nope. That's the strict definition of a vacuum. No matter. No atoms. Any object is classified as matter if it has volume and takes up space. All matter is made of extremely tiny particles called atoms. Name two smaller particles that atoms are made of. Protons, neutrons, electrons, gluons, leptons. Um, Bose-Higgs particle. Uh, bosons, I think it is. So, and some other ones. Uh, atoms of this kind of matter are extremely energetic and fly around in the extreme heat of the sun. That's the key, plasma. It's got to be plasma. This kind of matter has tightly packed high density, high density atoms. That's the key, solids, right? Um, the atoms in this kind of matter are more loosely packed and roll over, I'm pouring, pouring, roll over liquids. 35, this kind of matter is made up of atoms that freely fly around, have no definite shape, and spread out all around the inside of their containers. They fill up the inside of a container. Gas, of course. 36, the important inside part of an atom, nucleus. 37, Jesus made about 100 kinds of different um, uh, atoms, and each individual kind is called an element on the PTE, periodic table of elements. Here are the symbols for the elements, carbon C, hydrogen H, helium, he, helium, H-E, um, iron, F-E, nitrogen, N, the major gas in the Earth's atmosphere, about 75%, about 20% O2 or oxygen. Why didn't the Lord put more oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere? Kaboom! It would be explosive or flammable. A lot of you got that right. Okay, notice what I said on 42 and 43. Why is your superpower, or I said, what is your superpower? And name four aspects of your superpower from the GoTapi package. Gifts, opportunities, talents, abilities, physical appearance, purpose, personality, made in God's image for I. Name two important things you can do to develop this. Laura's been telling us about this. Practice, practice, practice. Learn from experts. Uh, use grit. I hang in there. I'm going to keep going and keep improving. Kind of an attitude. Set goals. Track your progress on those goals. There's five right there. Uh, other ones were only worth half. What kind of atom is constantly slamming um, into each other in the sun? Hydrogen. Name two things that come from hydrogen. So hydrogen, hydrogen fusion, and then helium, and heat, light, and helium. Uh, let's see what is the scientific law that holds negatively charged particles and positively charged particles. Opposites attract. Opposite electrical charges attract. What holds together the protons, which are like particles in the nucleus? They should 
push each other away. They should repel each other. They don't. Because God created another force to overcome repulsion. What is it? The SNF, strong nuclear force, or strong force. Many of you got it right. And then, um, 49, space is huge and it's mostly empty. The distance light travels uh, in a year is a light year. So it travels about 1 million miles every five seconds. Wow, that's fast. The nearest star to the sun um, is the freebie. It's Alpha Proxima. It's four plus light years away or over 24 trillion miles away. What's the name of Earth's star that's 93 million miles away? Earth's star. Earth's. That would be the sun. 53, the brightest star we can see, Sirius, it's 8.6 light years away, or 8 times 6 trillion, over 50 trillion miles away. So, wow, it's way out there. And it's called the rainbow star. Here's the reason, because the atmosphere bounces the different wavelengths of light from Sirius. Each color has a different wavelength, how high the wave is. Each color that we see, God programmed our, our retina to see different colors, and our brain tells us what colors we see. Do you see how that's an amazing design? So, specific wavelength, specific um, chemicals on the retina that send a specific nerve message to a specific place in our brain that sees color and tells us the specific color that we see and thousands of different shades. Is there a God or what? That is so complex. Love it, love it. And proud of you, God, for the way you did that. Uh, amazing. So that's what's happening with Sirius and different colors. So I showed you that um, slide of the different colors produced by um, Sirius. Just because, because the light from Sirius, Sirius is close as a star goes. So not the closest, but it's the biggest that we can see. So because it's relatively near. And because it's so big, it shoots a lot of light waves at us, gazillions and gazillions. And each of those individual light waves are going up and down a different amount. And our atmosphere makes that happen. The atmosphere is bouncing around on the Earth and um, producing different wavelengths or colors that our eyes see. Rainbow star, love it. So I look at it most every night right now. By the way, you know it's worth 10 points. But it's a whole enchilada. You've got to show them Orion. The whole enchilada, Orion. And then um, Sirius. And tell them about it. Tell them about the rainbow star and what's going on. And about the constellation Orion. Constellation is a group of stars that resemble something familiar on the earth. The Lord made the universe so ginormous. So why did he do that? To reveal his greatness or glory. Because then we'll pay attention to him. And then we'll get to know him. And it'll bless us. He wants to bless us. It's not showing off just to show off. He wants to reveal himself to us so he can bless us, help us, love on us, give us eternal life. So he's good to do that, isn't he? 57. Scientists can't prove the age of the Earth or Mars. Nope, they can't. It's just an assumption. So um, let's see. So what about the way God created the universe and everything in it that hints that it's not that old? He created it in six 24-hour periods. Or he said, let there be and it was so. Nothing instantly commanded. All of those are okay. 59 and 60, two different evidences that it's not that old. The earth and the moon are too hot. They should have leaked their heat out a long time ago. Rocks on the earth um, ha and uh, coal and oil have too much gas in them and too much water in them. They should have leaked it out a long time ago. The comets keep coming back. They should have all melted a long time ago if the universe and the earth is... You know, billions and billions of years old. None of it makes sense. <clears throat> um, the fossils of dinosaurs have DNA in them that should have broken down a long time ago in thousands of years. They can't be millions of years old. There's 
DNA in them. There are red blood cells in them. There's hemoglobin in them, we think. The red, uh, the chemical that carries oxygen. So anyway, all of that, um, just evidences for a young age for the earth, which you would expect. Remember the flood laid down everything geologically that we see rapidly. Evolutionists are in denial about evidence for a great global flood. They don't want to believe in it. They don't, don't tell me about it. I don't want to hear it. Nope. It, nothing to see there. Nothing to see there. Oh, no. No great global flood evidence. It's just everywhere. Sediment layers, fossils everywhere laid down. And then, you know, rapid continental drift, mountains rising, rising up and haven't uh, eroded down much. So, and on and on and on and on. All those great global flood evidences. All right, here's your homework in your book. Seventh grade, you're going to read... So, oh, by the way, the other 10-pointer was show your parents from lecture 33, the video of perseverance coming down. Show them that. And then get a parent signature, 10 points. Got to turn it in this week. It's due. If you don't turn it in by Friday, too late, because I've got to do my grades over the weekend and turn them in the next week. So too late if you don't get them in Friday by Friday. It's over, baby. So the quarter is over. So get them in if you're going to do it. Get in. I saw Sirius, parent signature. I saw Orion. I showed my parents the perseverance video. Okay. Uh, eighth grade, read pages 21 to 24. 21 to 24. And answer these questions. What happens during a physical change? Give a couple of examples. What happens during a chemical change? Give a couple of examples. Eighth grade. It's on RenWeb. 21 to 24. Read them. What happens during a physical change? Use your white sheet that Mr. Philip is passing out. What happens during a physical change? Give a couple of examples. What happens during a chemical change? Give a couple of examples. It's in your reading, 21 to 24. Okay, so get your books out, start going. Seventh grade, 32 to 33. Read 32 to 33. 32 to 33. What's that? What's that, Sonny? 32 to 33 at seventh grade. Read it, and then answer this question. What is a mineral? And give the five characteristics of a mineral and their definition. It's on RenWeb. What's that again? 32, 3, 2 to 33. 32 to 33, read those two pages in your textbook. Answer the question on your white sheet that's been provided. What is a mineral? And then five other things. Give the five characteristics of a mineral and their definition. Explain each one. Inorganic, what does that mean? Explain it. That's one of them. So, inorganic. So, 32 to 33. Write down what a mineral is. A mineral is, nice definition. And then the five characteristics of a mineral. They're listed right there. In 32 to 33. Okay, homework, maybe 10 minutes max, 12 minutes. Okay, so there you go. Hey, get those uh, 10 minute, 10 minute, 10 minute, get those 10 pointers that are on the table. Show your parents Orion and Sirius, and then show them the perseverance video in um, video lecture 33. The five and a, five. Um, five minute, 45 second video at the end. Okay. All right. We're, uh, turn it over to Mr. Philip. He'll let you work on homework uh, till the end of the period. You might have just a couple of minutes left. Mr. Philip, thank you.